There have been many friends of mine who wanted to know about my family life as a child. Uh, first, I'd like to say I came from a very large family. I had seven sisters and three brothers. I call myself the tithe. I was number 10. When I was born, right in the middle of the Depression, 1930, Six months later, my mother had to go to the hospital. She had always been a very faithful Christian in the Methodist Church. Her dad was a Methodist minister. Her brothers were both Methodist ministers. And my older sister married a Methodist minister, so that's the background. Mother went to the hospital, Catholic hospital, and uh, her case worsened and I was told that the doctors revealed to the family that she probably wouldn't survive. During this critical time, when I was six months old, mother had a vision. She told me a bright light flooded her room, and a voice was heard calling her by her first name, Matty, M-A-T-T-I-E. And mother said, the voice said to her, I want you to keep my commandments. Being a little baffled, she said, Well, Lord, which one am I not keeping? I thought I was keeping your commandments. He didn't answer, but he showed her the fourth commandment. And she said it was immediately clear that it meant seventh day, Saturday, not Sunday. She said, Lord, nobody knows this. My neighbors don't know my family doesn't know. If this is your will, let me leave this testimony so that they will believe. The Lord said, Matty, I want living sacrifices. The vision faded. Mother was combing her own hair the next day and lived to see me baptizing souls in the ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A great miracle. Uh, for 10 years, Mother kept Sabbath. Now, she didn't keep it correctly, but she kept it perfectly. I, I love to tell that, because perfect obedience is when you do all that you know to do. We'd never heard of Sabbath beginning at sunset, and as I was growing up, at 10 o'clock Friday night, Mother would be baking, scrubbing, getting ready for midnight, and the advent of the Sabbath. We didn't know. We had no books, no teacher, no pamphlets, nothing, except that vision and her usual Christianity. This went on until 1940. And one day a call porter went to my eldest sister's home, the one married to a Methodist preacher. And he began to canvass her, and she became impatient. She said, she told him, sir, I don't want to embarrass you in my house, but I'm really a little tired of uh, traditional religion. I don't want to hear it. He said, well, please tell me what you mean. What's wrong? She said, well, we do a lot of talk, but we're not living according to God's commandments. Well, you know this interested him. Go on, he said. She said, do you know that Sunday is not the Sabbath? And yet we go traipsing off to church on Sunday. He said, which day is the Sabbath? She said, the seventh day. And the commandment says, keep the seventh day. Well, this went on for a while, and he sat there smiling. And she said she wondered why. And then he turned and said to her, Mrs. Black, how would you like to go to a church where everybody believes that? We had never heard of Seventh-day Adventists. That was on a Thursday. I was older now. When I got home from school, my mother was rejoicing in the home. And that next day, the minister was there. And the next day, he came back and took my mother, six sisters, and myself to church. I remember walking into church that day. It was ordinary, not very elaborate. There was no carpet, wall to wall. There were no pads on the seats. There was a big pot-bellied stove in the middle of the main aisle 
with a long pipe to disseminate heat. Very plain. And when I looked up over the pulpit, the Ten Commandments were hanging there. And I was a 10-year-old kid, and it was as though a voice said to me, this is it. And that's how we came to the church. We were not baptized immediately. Now, the pastor was a wise man. He visited a lot. We even grew our own pork. You see, I lived on a farm, and uh, our pork was prize pork because it was grain-fed. They were grain-fed. Others were fed with garbage and slop. And uh, yet the minister, knowing all of these things, never said anything at the time to offend. But he opened a revival early in 1941 and announced a baptism. Oh, we knew we were going to be baptized. This is what we've been longing for. Everything we had learned, we loved. And then he began to say to Mother, I want you to wait for the next baptism. She said, wait? What do you mean? For 10 years we waited. Now that we've found the truth, why should we wait longer? A logical question, but he had a good practical reason for not wanting to do it too soon because every Sabbath mother had on her jewelry and my sisters did too. And he said finally when she wouldn't let go, Mrs. Brooks, there's some things you don't understand yet. She said, like what? He said, for instance, God has an interest in the care of our bodies. These bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit and God wants us to be careful how we eat. What do you mean? And then he broke it. Pork, fish without scales and fins, the whole business involved in initial health reform. We had never heard it before. But when he said that, mother said, please show it to me. And he turned over in the Old Testament and he read it. Then he read those things in the New. And as soon as he finished reading, mother said, all right, what else? Emboldened now, he said, well, God has claims on our appearance. And he tells us not to wear superfluous adornings, earrings, rings, and so forth. Mother said, please show it to me. And he read it from both the Old and the New Testaments. She said, all right, what else? And that's literally how we came into the church. God had prepared us and everything that we learned was precious. I had one sister that I, I often mentioned. She was a very uh, fine-looking lady, and she had married a sailor who was overseas, and she balked at the dress reform. She said, oh, no, no, I, uh, my husband uh, met me. This is the way I was, and while he's gone, I expect that he shall come back and find me looking the same as I always did. So she held off for a week or two and then became baptized. And one of the most faithful members, she's still alive in her 80s. She has won professional people to the church. That's how we